thanks for staying with us on your channel of choice, Africa Independent Television AIT. Welcome to the Signature Show. I am Wabuz Njoku, and in this edition of the program this Sunday, are Nigerian politicians confusing the electorate in order to issue them a dot check? Budgeting for security is the National Assembly playing its legislative role as talks of underfunding and corruption raise queries on sustaining the war on insurgency. Political impunity, why do some politicians insist on eating their cake and having it back? And vacant seats in the National Assembly, what does it take to conduct a by-election? Plus, uh, thank you and Corruption Tory, stay with us. Now, the politics of 2014 to 2015 presidential election in Nigeria was that of long knives. The nocturnal meetings, alignments and realignments, and the emergence of new PDP at the presidential convention of the party was the outcome of a move to undermine the ambition of then-president, uh, good luck Jonathan, to return to Rock Villa, a move considered by some northern interests as compromising the gentleman's agreement of a south or north-south power rotation. The entry into the fray by Bola Ahmed Tinubu with his political structure and followership, the merger with other political parties, and the fusion with the new PDP, Big Wigs, produced what today is known as the All Progressives Congress APC. The APC would have retained power at the center for eight years by May of 2023. Nigerians now know the benefit or loss of a party that came into existence not on any defensible ideology, any convincing economic or social ideas, but simply to spite a sitting president and take power. The disaster today called Nigeria is more divided than at any time in its history, not even during the Civil War, was everybody against everybody in Nigeria. Today, poverty has become Nigeria's national shame, with our population of beggars swarming every street corner, and crime becoming an attractive option for many of our youth who must survive. Nigeria's education sector and its near collapse means nothing to the government, with the average Nigerian, of course, thinking more of survival than education. Corruption and arrogant impunity are now part of belonging to the government, and our younger politicians also being socialized into it if they want to belong. These are the consequences of the formation of a political party out of hate, without ideals, but just to grab power. Now, of recent, Nigerian politicians have been aggregating, meeting in London and Paris, the same way they met in Saudi Arabia and London, to empower APC and undermine. Good luck, Jonathan. Some of the same dramatic personnel in the 2014 drama of hate are involved in the current evolving situation. Then is Nigeria about to see another tearing of umbrellas and burning of brooms to create another coalition without our deals. Should Nigerians not be wary of political personalities who are intent on creating new calls to grab power? Nigeria's challenges today stem from a nation without ideas, government without philosophy, politics, that is not building a nation for all of us, and political leadership that is shunned of intellectual death. How does Nigeria recover from such unenviable situation? Now, some Nigerians still raise the unfounded and unjustified question whether the 2023 elections will hold. They hinge their fear on the quantity and quality of arms in the hands of non-state actors. They also raise the fear 
that the amount of money kidnappers have amassed from both government and individual ransom payments. The terrorists could be in a position to cause major disruption to electioneering and scuttle to the process. But here we say such fears are unfounded because even with their so-called armaments, our security agencies are taking the battle to the criminals. The bigger challenge, though, is the level of provisioning for the troops and how adequate the funding is. And this is the issue taken up by correspondent Marvelous Obomano in this report. The performance of Nigerian security agencies in the past one month following national outcry that bandits and terrorists were taking control of the lives of the citizens in many states cannot be ignored. From the Nigerian Air Force, which took their campaign to the inner recesses of the criminals' camps, to the ground troops which are taking back hitherto criminals' hideouts, to the Nigerian police whose operations across the country have led to the arrest of high-profile criminals. The nation's security agencies have successfully put criminals on the back foot. Two of seven guard battalion and one to seven special forces battalion, in conjunction with the air component of Operation Wide Punch, conducted clearance patrols around the general area between 24 and 26 July. Two successfully cleared Kabul and Indo villages. Consequently, Apatati terrorists were neutralized after the bombardment and their enclaves and hideouts were destroyed. As we celebrate the new bite being exhibited by the security agencies, there is a need to draw attention to some encumbrances which have made the operations of the security agencies a burden. In the next one month, President Muhammad Buhari is expected to present the 2023 national budget to the National Assembly. It will be the president's last budget before he leaves office in May 2023. In the last seven years, over 12 trillion naira has been budgeted for security agencies, including the military, the police, and allied organizations. From 2016 to 2021, Nigeria's defense budget has been in a steady increase. In 2016, it was 1.04 trillion naira, went up to 1.053 trillion in 2017, and 1.305 trillion in 2018. The defense budget claimed to 1.76 trillion in 2019, 1.78 trillion in 2020, and 1.97 trillion in 2021. In the 2022, budget defense moved up to 2.41 trillion naira. So there's quite a difference between what that amount you mentioned now and what actually gets to the police. I can tell you it is scandalous. What comes to the police is meager, pitiable, and it's a shame. The National Assembly, uh, under the leadership of Lawan, the Senate President. Uh, you know, he said that whatever comes to the National Assembly from the President is for the, for the interests of the country. So I th think they've done, they've done well. President Muhammad Buhari has said on more than one occasion that he has provided all that the security agencies need to prosecute the war on terror, which has grounded agriculture and threatening food security and made interstate travels a high risk. However, there are murmurings within the security agencies that the budgets are hardly well-funded. There are also allegations of corruption within the system. In the case of underfunding, the Minister of Finance is alleged to use what is called envelope release of funds to the security organizations, which amounts may appear substantial in figure, but hardly enough to meet operational needs of the agencies in a war that is making high demand on resources. For me, the military is underfunded. Though I know corruption also has a part, also. 
you can't take that away. With the little that have been budgeted, you understand? I know, um, you know what it means for them to pass a certain budget, the National Assembly itself, the different committees or defense and what have you. Uh, they will always also want their own interest to be covered. In consequence, the security agencies cannot procure all the need to prosecute the war and meet expectations of the Nigerian public. By code of ethics of these agencies, they cannot openly complain or seem to be contradicting the civil authorities. The case of the Nigerian police is even worse. With police stations, post divisions and commands in virtually every town in Nigeria, the force is so underfunded that it is a wonder how it operates. The police high command can only give to the subordinate officers and stations as much as they can afford. You cannot give what you don't have. Police budgeting ought to be from bottom up. There are divisions who say what, how much they need to run the station in a quarter. And then it goes up ladder and goes to headquarters. And then goes to National Assembly. Each time, a number of times, police has done that. You find the police asking for three trillion. And somebody in National Assembly will make a blanket statement. We should carry the entire body of Nigeria and give police. This is the reason police posts use either candle or bush lamps for lightning. This is why the police operational vehicles are not well maintained and this is why the police in the field begins to devise ingenious means of running their operations. The consequence is the visible task collection which today is the face of the police and its culture of corruption. The police is an end user. It is what it gets that it uses. Sometimes you have some amount of money budgeted for, for the police, sometimes approved by National Assembly. But what is budgeted, what is appropriated, is miles apart from what is released. A lot of talk is made about so much money really uh, budgeted for the police, but it trickles down to virtually like 7% that is actually released to the police. Analysts then wonder what the responsibility of the National Assembly Committees that oversight the security agencies. If the security agencies are underfunded, should the committees not raise the alarm? It is also part of due to the National Assembly as legislators to exercise oversight function on funds released, appropriated, released to agencies and departments. But they must follow it to be sure the money is being used for what they were meant and not fired and not misappropriated or misspent as case may be. The underfunding, non-release of appropriated funds to the security agencies creates a situation in which Nigeria's security situation keeps deteriorating. It makes the citizen to lose confidence in the government and as the National Assembly gets set to receive the 2023 budget, it must also ask for the performance of the 2022 and raise queries on how much has really been released and to what use the monies have been put to. In Abuja, Marvelous Obaman for Signature Show. Thank you, Marvelous. Now, we have raised the challenge of Nigerian politics becoming, becoming a game of sharp swords and long knives. In the process, Capoons become political leaders and men of little intellect occupy positions of thought. What the nation gets is a bounce check which cannot redeem its value. But there is another affliction which Nigerian politics is confronted with impunity a sense of entitlement. After the highly publicized APC presidential primaries, the following contestants lost out Obon Nayono, Devo Mahe, Goswil Akbabi, Ahmed Lawan, and Kayode Faemi. Obon Nayono and Kayode Faemi quietly accepted their fate, but Ahmed Lawan, Devo Mahe, and Goswil Akbabi chose to have their cake after eating it. 
they went back to claim the Senate seats from the initial winners in an, an arrogant display of despicable sense of entitlement. What does the Electoral Act say? And even if the law creates a vacuum, does INEC have the powers to tell these politicians that their cake is gone? This is the issue we focus on in our conversation for this Sunday. Please stay with us. When the issues matter and the need to know matters. The chief of staff of Nigeria couldn't go to his village because it was being occupied by Boko Haram. Politicians and political parties have massively used money to buy votes and to change the course of electoral direction. You must also remember, the Benny APC itself set up a refined committee recommending something doesn't mean anything. Go back to federalism. Or the fun and the fair to relieve everyday care. Life is a riddle, my son. The land bled when Uvoranwen was put in shackles. Everyone wept when Saruwiwa was laid to rest. Everything comes with the Josh Tufoni. Everything comes with who I am. The Signature Show, your show that matters, on AIT every Sunday at 2 p.m. Michael, let me welcome you to the conversation. My pleasure to be with you. Michael, let us begin the conversation this way. I'm sure that you've been following stories of meetings being held in London, in Paris, between some former and um, current PDP governors and former President Olusegun Obasanjo. And some of these personalities also held meetings with the Labour Party presidential candidate, P2B, and that of APC, Ashwaju Balahme Tinubu and Atiku Abubakar. Alignment, realignment, do you read this as indicating that there could be emergence of a third force, kind of, or a real split? as he saw it before Buhari's election, when APC emerged. Do you read anything like that in these meetings? Uh, you know, <clears throat> in Nigeria, there are what we call electoral season. Ideally, it should be called uh, a quarterly festival of, uh, quarterly festival of uh, professional politicians. Where, which period where uh, the political elites can do anything within their powers to retain influence, whether within the corridors of powers or outside the corridors of powers. So when things like this happen, meetings like that are expected. Of course, it will either lead to split or lead to emergence. This resource has always been the case. To the issue in focus this Sunday, let me mention three top Nigerian politicians. Dave Umahe of Ebony State, Gosula Pabio, of Akwaibom State, Ahmed Lawan, the current Senate President. These three gentlemen contested the presidential ticket of their parties and they lost. The presidential primaries were held after the Senate primaries were conducted and winners had emerged. And these gentlemen went back to try to seize the ticket Senate ticket of their different senatorial zones. In the eye of the law, is it right? Is it permissible? Is it legal? Okay. This uh, um, issue has uh, been predominant in the political space of the country. But I want to use that of Ebony State as a case study. Because the legal contest in courts, I think, appears to be predominant. Not that other candidates are not in courts. You know, the emergence of this, this new electoral act is a very enticing work on development. In the sense that there are margins of sections that will saturate to an, a great extent the electioneering atmosphere of the country. And we are aware that section 151 repealed the Electoral Act of 2010 and introduced the Electoral Act of 2022. The law 
I'm going to discuss it the way it is and not the way it ought to be. Because there, I, I'm a lawyer, I read, what I read is existing laws and not an advisor to lawmakers. Now, you mentioned if there is a legal place for them in such a situation. These cases are already in court, and of course, I will be a bit cautious of the statements I make because they are already prejudiced, subjudiced rather. We understand that the controversial, though to me not controversial, section is section 115, paragraph B and paragraph K of the Electoral Act 2022 that criminalizes double nomination by a candidate. And I want to say, with respect to the individual opinion of my friends in the legal community, uh, with utmost humility, that the section of the law in question read together with other connected sections, like section um, 29, section 31, section 33, are not in any way ambiguous. Reason being that the key words in the section in question are nomination and candidates. Now the question is, what does the Electoral Act talk about, talks about nomination and candidates? What is the definition given to these two words by the Electoral Act? That takes us to section 152, being the, electoral, the, the interpretation section of the Electoral Act that defines a candidate as a person, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm, I will not miss the operational ways, a person who has successfully secured the tickets of a, political, of a political party to contest in the main election. Now, I, the electoral, the, the section does not explain what nomination is, but in the interpretation given to the candidates, you will see the meaning of the word nomination. And by giving a literal meaning to the section, to, the, to section 33, section 31, 30, you will see the meaning of the word nomination. And also, if you take a look into nomination forms, which is a public document anybody can assess, you also see the meaning of the word candidate and nomination. I will go to that. But I want to explain that the argument in the legal community as to whether the section 115, paragraph B, D, applies to aspirants or candidates is not necessary. Because section 115 explicitly said candidates. And there is no doubt as to whether there is a dichotomy between the word aspirants and candidates. These are two different words. And that their meanings are ascribed in the same electoral act. Which means we don't even need to start going into, into interpretation acts or other sections or even the constitution to be able to import the meaning of those words. As bad as it may sound, when you talk about domination and candidacy, we are talking about post-primary phase of the electoral process. I am not using my own words. I'm using the words of Section 152 of the Electoral Act. Who has successfully secured? It's a past tense. Promises have taken place before the word secured will be used. So, now, when somebody says, this Electoral Act, with respect to my legal, to my learned friends who have diverse opinions, which they're entitled to, the virtue of Section 39 of the Constitution, everybody has the right to express himself. But I'm saying that the controversy is needless because the words of those sections are explicit. It says candidates. It says nomination form. Now, in my own view, I am of the opinion that the law was not controversial, or the, the makers of the law were not confused. There's an intention. This form, therefore, yes. makes provision from the beginning yes. that a presidential candidate, for instance, or a governorship candidate, for instance, should have known who his vice or deputy is. Otherwise, and there will be should also provide for it in that form. Yes, that is that is. In the other words, in other words, all this unveiling of candidates post primaries, yes. post primaries, is an infraction. It's an infraction. Let's take for instance what happened in the Moy states as a case study. 
Dave Umai, essentially the governor Dave Umai, was an aspirant because I can't call him a candidate prior to primaries. He's an aspirant. He was an aspirant, presidential aspirant here in Abuja. And the senatorial election, and primary election, were conducted and, and, and candidates were emerged. His brother, Hostin Umai, emerged as the winner. In the Senate contest. In the Senate contest, a boy in South. Now, when Dave Umai was unfortunate at the presidential level, and he lost. And he lost. I want to use that word unfortunate, and he lost to Alaji, um, to, to Ahmed Bolatinubu, Senator Ahmed Bolatinubu, he came down. His younger brother, Hostin Omai, by virtue of Section 31, that allows him to withdraw his candidature, his candidateship, withdrew his candidateship, and accordingly wrote to our neck through the party because the, the, the law says the candidate who intends to withdraw yeah, will write through the, through the party. The party is the one that will submit the letter of withdrawal to our neck. Just the same way, Section 29 of the Electoral Act says that parties are the people that will submit nominated candidates. If you look at that, that section 29, it mentioned candidates. Parties will submit candidates. It simply means this submission is done post-primaries. Because I'm trying to understand why there should be controversy over these issues, over these uh, um, facts. Now, I make Dave Umay conducted another primaries in July. Where he emerged, either June or July, where he emerged as the winner, unopposed. I never refused to publish his name. Because I NEC, by virtue of Section 4, 84, is empowered, 8483, is empowered to monitor the elections. Now, I NEC has a name that has been withdrawn. And Section 33 says that fresh election has to be conducted. And that fresh election has to be monitored by the commission. So the election that was conducted by Dave Umay, wearing a match on opposed, was, in, was not inclusive. INEC acting on the power donated to them by Section 84 said no. We did not monitor it. We did not monitor the election. And therefore, we it cannot. Made, it made the provisions of the law. No, no, so Dave Umay went to court. While in court, Mrs. Um, Anne Agomeze. I filed um, a motion for gender. Of course, it was complete because the outcome of the suit will definitely affect her. The court, at the end of the day, struck out or dismissed the, the case of Dave Umay, but made some orders. So Dave Umay, it, the court did not outrightly say that Dave Umay, the court, first of all, held that Dave Umay was not the candidate. But the court then ordered that there should be fresh election, as provided for by Section 33 of the Electoral Act which say that the first election must be fixed within 14 days. Don't forget that the law allows political parties to submit their candidate, whether substituting anybody or not. They must do that within 180 days prior to the election. So in order to meet up with that time, the election, the letter has mandated that that fresh election must be conducted within 14 days. Now, what happened in that case is this. Of course, they are on appeal. And Agamo is there is of the opinion that the election that should be conducted again should not be open for new candidates. Because, because... That may I, usher in Dave Umay. No, let us, let us, let us yes. probe into her reasoning. Should not accommodate new candidates because a person like Dave Umay had con uh, contested on the election. When the, when the Electoral Act says you cannot contest this election and contest another election. Is it intra-party or inter-party? I will come there. Because that is, the, that is the, 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 the membrane of the entire legal issue. Is it intra-party or inter-party? Is it post-primary or pre-primary? Because they are the same thing. These two, are, these two questions are the same thing. Now, Dave Umay, I'm not a supporter of Dave Umay. I'm just talking the law the way it is. Dave Umay had contested for primaries at the presidential level. Perfect. And Dave Umay did not emerge as candidates. No, he did not. Dave Umay had not filled the nomination form as contemplated by section 115, paragraph B. Because section 115, paragraph B, you say, 
you should not. If you, you have to read that paragraph B in conjunction with paragraph K. He has emerged as a, a candidate. candidate. He has not filled a nomination form as a candidate of a party. He was a free agent. Are you, getting, could, my, are you getting my legalism? He, he could go to another. Yes, although the court did not say so. The court was of opinion that you cannot contest. That is the judgment of the court. And that is the judgment which only a court of appeal or the same court can overrule. That is what the judgment is. But I'm looking at what the law has said. The law says, paragraph K says, he that signs double nomination form. The question is, did Dave Omai sign a double nomination form? Did Dave Omai present a VP to INEC by virtue, by, with form um, EC13B? That is the question. And the answer is, obviously, no. Let me be very frank with in other words, Dave Umai still remains free because he had not emerged as a candidate. Interpreting the weddings of section 152, section 15. Section 152, section 115, paragraph B and K. That is, those are not my words. Michael Ogobuchi, thank you very much for coming to the conversation. My pleasure. I really appreciate it. Well, as the impunity of politicians creates a challenge to our electoral process, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, seems also to be unwittingly adding to the confusion. Vacant seats in the National Assembly. Why has INEC failed to conduct by-elections to fill them? Are the political parties also waiting or putting pressure to offer the seats, maybe without election, to some anointed candidates, or does INEC have its own agenda? Correspondent Nasi Usman examines the issue of unfilled assembly seats as President Buhari prepares to present the 2023 budget before the National Assembly. Stay with us. As the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, prepares for the 2023 elections, there are already debates on whether it will deploy electronic transmission of results or the results will be transmitted manually, even after the Commission has explained that both methods will be deployed. Elections results will be transmitted manually, but in case of contentions over the figures, the electronically transmitted result will be used as a check. Those who seem to profit from the weakness of the manual transmission are pushing the narrative that the law provides for manual transmission of election results. Well, I believe it's a welcome development. Even in the 2020, 2019 elections, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Electoral Act was amended but was not assented to by the President. That was what thwarted the issue of electronic transmission of results. So you see, the, 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 the whole world is progressing. Uh, the, the digitalization and ICT has taken over. Now we cannot lag behind as a country and as a people because uh, this is the way the whole world is going. And it will be retrogressive if we continue to depend on manual uh, handling of our electoral process. So therefore, I think INEC should be given the chance uh, to conduct this election and transmit results electronically. Apart from the issue of how results will be transmitted, there is another instant agitation confronting INEC. On March 26, Senator Abdullah Adam emerged as national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC. By his new position, he could not continue to occupy his seat in the Senate. He resigned. Similarly, Senator Abubakar Kiari, who emerged as deputy national chairman, not, also resigned. In consequence, their senatorial district, Nasarawa West and Bruno North, have no representations in the Senate. It is almost six months since both Abdullah Adamu and Abubakar Kiari took up political party positions. If the pronouncement of the courts in the disputed election cases serve as a guide, by election to fill the vacancies should have been conducted within 90 days of the seats being declared vacant. The Senate President, Ahmed Lawal, as written the Independent National Electoral Commission as required by law, 
informing the commission that the two seats are vacant. Similarly, the seat of Senator Muhammad Hassan Nasia has also been declared vacant after he resigned to become the deputy governor of Zamfara State, after the former deputy governor was impeached. So why has INEC not conducted by election in the vacant seats? I think there is no excuse for INEC not to conduct those elections. And I don't think it's uh, financially related. They just conducted the election for Shun State and uh, they conducted the election for Ekiti State. These are all midterm uh, elections or off-season elections. And they are also aware, they've been informed from what I gathered, the Senate President had already communicated to them. And they have 90 days when such messages are passed across for them to conduct the election. So INEC has not come back to tell us that they are not able to conduct the election due to funding constraints. So I don't think the issue is uh, funding. And I just can't find any justification whatsoever why INEC has not conducted the elections. Perhaps maybe this will be an opportunity for them to tell Nigerians. And I also expected the people from this senatorial district to have raised the issue and engage INEC to quickly conduct these elections and also find out why INEC has not done that. So if you ask me, it's more or less an issue of the election of duty. They have not considered that as a priority. While they are preparing for the general elections, 2023 general election, they need to also take this as a priority. Uh, because it's a constitutional requirement. When the constitution stipulates an action to be taken by any agency, it is mandatory. It's not about whether INEC uh, has any option. They have to conduct the election. But when and how they conduct the election, they will give us the reasons why they have delayed. But I believe that... Uh, they will do the needful and very soon we'll uh, hear their response. As INEC focuses on the 2023 elections, constituents of this senatorial district will lose the advantage that comes with having its parliamentarian to converse their interest in the legislature. It will even be more needful now that the National Assembly will soon begin the consideration of the 2023 budget. The essence of dividing the country across senatorial districts is to ensure that every constituency, every segment of the society is effectively represented, their voices are effectively represented, their issues are canvassed by their representatives. So it has huge implications for these people. I don't envy them. It means that issues that will have been projected by Senator Abdullah Yagdamun and Senator Kerry in the case of uh, uh, Yobe is no longer uh, projected and it's a big loss for those people. So I think it has implication for governance, for especially for those people, most especially considering the fact that we are moving into the consideration of the 2023 budget where our common wealth, where the resources of this country is now going to be allocated across the states, across the federation, who will be projecting the wishes and the aspirations of these people during the budget consideration. Some constituents in the three senatorial zones are raising protests that their interests will suffer for as long as they have no representation. Democracy makes no meaning without the legislature, and the legislature has little relevance unless the people are represented. INEC will be giving full meaning to Nigerians' democracy if it ensures that no Nigerians are not represented in the People's Allowed Chamber, the National Assembly. In Abuja, Nasir Usman for signature show. And now for our thank you for this Sunday. Children in our country cannot stop singing that birthday song. Today is your day, Mek Shakara. Happy, happy birthday. That's all I can say. A song for which many Nigerian families are grateful to Lagos born Ugoja parents, superstar Sonny Neji. But well, it is Uruka that has set Sonny Neji apart as an artist who takes from the high life idiom to create new music accepted from Sokoto to Sagbama. And this is Uruka by Sonny Neji, our sweeper for this Sunday. You 
Cause you're my baby, your sister, your lover, your cover, your teacher, and your everything Just before we leave you, let's give you a bit of New Yams. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Penultimate Saturday. Friends, colleagues, and associates of Chief Umwa Buez and Joko joined him at the offices of Signature Communications Limited to celebrate the 2022 Iri Johoro ceremony. Chief Umwa Buez and Joko were receiving the guests pointed out that insecurity in the country affected the celebration, which is usually done in his hometown, Mbise in Imo State, hence the need to mark the event with his friends and colleagues in Abuja. <laughs> Some of the invited guests spoke on the importance of the New Yam Festival, what it means for Nigeria's culture, and why it is celebrated. This one is symbolic, and I think I think it's a way of keeping our culture. No, and I think no no generation should allow this country to die. I think that we should stop um, pushing our our culture to the background and, as, and, and pretending to, to flow with the alien cultures. It is something Mbise people in Imo State of Nigeria do every year. Ewaji go see now. Aye bido go. Iliji. Geofolo. Go see when now. Can I go to Kuna? Oto sinyala kaya konubi apota gba o alale what if what if gba odun ta se leni as the guests were helping themselves to the sumptuous popular mbise soup known as ofe mbise there was also traditional music to lighten the occasion <laughs> The New Yam Festival is celebrated every year from August through September and has served as an avenue to unite the people. Marvelous, a bowman for the signature show.
And that's our program for this Sunday. But please, please still remain with us as we join my colleague, Marvelous Obomano, for Corruption Tori. My name is Mwabwe Zenjoko. Good afternoon. My country people, we don't carry another Tory come this Sunday. This na corruption Tory time. Na me be your corruption Tory master, marvelous Oboman. On a welcome. I know say last week some people clap, some shout, some say, ah, to be better person no means say you must be an imam or a pastor. The Tory of Modesta or Fobike where we carry come last Sunday, it makes sense. It touch the heart, and that one tell you say, my brother, my sister, good thing good. This week we get another story where we go show say in many places, in many jobs, Nigerians day where they make sacrifice, where they show say the noise about corruption. Again, Nigerians when they go put their hand inside them, no matter how they they take suffer rich. Now in be our story this Sunday. This a corruption story. You know be saying a lie. You know say when goats when they chop yam, begin waka with another goat where they chop yam. Himself go begin to chop yam. But he get goat where be say no matter no matter how he take be, them no go greet chop yam. This na the story of one policeman where they for one police post, new Karu police post where they for Nasrawa State. As we finish corruption story, talk your own, make I talk my own. Where Oyibo they call town hall meeting from Pape where they for Abuja. And as we can show the town hall for corruption to reprogram, some people, market women, Okada Union, and cultural association can gather themselves, come tell us for corruption to say, he get one policeman will be like, say, inside marriage register with poverty. Hmm. But why they come talk the, about this man like this now? First, the man named now DSP Mike Oboku, now him they in charge of new Karu police post. As Ogawe him be, he can do and undo. But the SP Michael Boku not even get Okada. Some of the officers get to, but this man no they allow anybody pay any bribe for his station. For the SP Michael Boku, that thing where they write, police is your friend. The man they take him serious. Don't pay for bail. The man no they take him play. So corruption to go find the SP Michael Boku after we don't write the Nasarawa State Commission of Police to give the SP Michael Boku two awards anti-corruption icon and anti-corruption soldier on behalf of corruption theory with support of MacArthur foundation representing this to you um, in recognition of the outstanding efforts in the fight against corruption congratulations The Oga of Work for Corruption Tori, where be Chief Umwabwe Zenjoko, come talk say, waiting make corruption Tori, come find the SP Mike Oboku, now make others learn, say, if you do good thing, good thing go find you come, even if you be like, say, things they had. Again, not in the sweet pass, thank you. The story of Nigeria, what we read very quickly in about Nigeria is, they are corrupt, they are corrupt. If you go to Ibo, BBC, Nigeria corrupt. You go to VOA, Nigeria corrupt. Even ourselves, we ourselves, sometimes we say we are corrupt. It is how you tell your story that people will tell it for you. So we decided that every year we must identify one Nigerian in public service, in important service, where there's a lot of temptation 
and still the person resists doing the wrong things. Before we found you, I didn't know you. It was community people. These market women, all these pharmacy people, say, give me, give us a policeman whom you think. That was, that's the first I got to know you. So it is your activity and the image you are making for the police, not for yourself, that made us come here today. We work with Makato Foundation of ESA. They are our partners and sponsors. And that is why on behalf of Makato Foundation and Signature TV. As we go new Karu Police Division, now so many, many friends and officers where they work with DSP Michael Boku come gather to rejoice with Michael Boku for the good thing we don't happen to them. Come see what they talk about officer with corruption to honor. DSP Mike Akubo is a very nice man. A kind of man that listening to people to solve their problem, to entertain them. Time of issues, you bring complaint, he will listen to you very well, and he will solve the problem. And he's a man that he needs straightforward. If you are working with him. Tell him the truth. You have problem. Come up and explain. Time of issue like that, he will address you people how to come up with case. If there is case, he will tell you what to do, and he will address the issue very well. It's a man that don't take side. He's always speaking truth. Listening to the parties, he will give you your own, he will give you your own. So it's a man that's always good with people. It's a man that always interrupt with everyone working with him. He's a nice man. I want to thank you people for the award. And I know him, I'm a business lady. I come here to sell markets. And from the time I've spent with him, he's a good man. I'm not a police officer, like I told you before. I'm a business lady. And is what I see, I can tell you. I don't really know much deeply, but my interaction with him, sometimes he's a nice man. Not all eggs that are bad. There is one particular, there are other ones that make one bad. But I want to tell you, you know, everybody's character is different. His character, he's a very nice man. He don't, he don't get into my staying with him, my interaction and my, my observation. He don't get into bribing. He do, if he's handling a case, he do justice to that. One of the SP Mike Oboku friend will be retired ASP Elias Danjuma. Come talk say, as him heart, they happy for him friend with them award. Mm. He no go kukuma man to marry DSP Mike Oboku o. Ha. But the challenge na say, Oboku na man. And a marriage uh, plan, he no go fee work. Well, Mark, uh, DSP Mike Oboku. It's my brother. It's my friend. It's my colleague. We work together. And uh, since I knew him, He's, he's a different person. Michael Boku is a different person. That in the issue of corrupt, no, is zero. Mark is a good man. In fact, if I'm a woman, I'll say I'll marry him. I imparted me a lot. But I know the sky is his limit. Because he's imparted a lot. And uh, I'm happy too. Those junior ones that are working under him, they will sit up. Because that is always, any time that the lecture then, always tell them they should sense corruption. Corruption is not good. So I'm happy for the award that people are giving to him. I have been, I have seen him that he will get it more. Thank you. Mike Oboku, where corruption to re-give their work, come talk say, the award where corruption to re-give them. Go make and they do more work, put in hand straight, without any magu magu. I never knew that it resulted to this. So, I'm very happy over it. Oh no, I'm not different from others. You see, the, 
The problem is that I don't have much comment to make. Hmm? Only we give thanks to God eh, for placing me in this position. And this award, I only dedicated it to my DPO and my staff. That is all, all I have to say. In fact, uh, I'm, I've never known them before. I've never known the, organ uh, the foundation before. It got to surprise me when I got to know them, when they approached me. This was is happening, this was happening. So I have to take it with good faith. This a corruption theory. Hmm. If you like say police don't they change everywhere, oh ha! People go ask, na Nigerian police be this. Yes, so na wa Nigerian police and na police officer. The award where corruption Tori give the SP Mike Oboku so say no be all police they corrupt and no be all public officer they put hand for Magu Magu. I beg, may we thank the SP Mike Oboku for showing say Nigerian police get good officers. Now here we go end corruption Tori today. May we jam again next Sunday. Now me be authority master, marvelous Oboman. Una baba yo.